So here's how I spread my brake calipers. I use my right hand when it's not holding the camera and I'll put the levers together and press it open like that. On these where it's a lightweight aluminum caliper on this Subaru, I don't worry about suspending the, uh, what you say, I don't worry about suspending the caliper, I'll just let it hang. It's not going to stress the hose because this thing, it seriously weighs nothing. I mean it is just light as light. Lay out your brake pads and uh, look at the way that your indicators are. This is a piston side, you can tell it's because it's a circle. So you trace out the same shape that you have on your new brake pad, do the same thing over here. Just go like that. Now that corresponds with the two fingers that are on your caliper. So you know that that one goes on the outside. Put it into your clips. Um, some require a little bit of lube on the ends here and here. When it comes to making your brakes be quiet, I use this brake quiet. You can either glue them, which I'm doing, using a very lightweight silicone glue, or you can lubricate them, one or the other. It's good to do one or the other. Um, some have lubrication in between the little extra pads that you buy, just depending on how fancy the pads are that you get. When you have it taken apart like this, check and see if these move freely. These need to be able to slide because you're only pushing from one side with the piston, so it's got to be able to center properly. Make sure those are good. If it's not, yank it out. Grease it up. You can see this one's got plenty of grease. So I'll put it back, get it to seat. So I'm ready to put my caliper back on. I've already expanded it. I can see that this one is sliding fine. We're in good shape. The old pads wore evenly. If the pads wear in unevenly, one faster than the other, then you need to do something about that. Use brake parts cleaner. If they're seized, you can't get it out. To even check it, it won't move. Heat it up with the torch. Uh, you, even a propane torch. Just make sure you have water on hand to cool it quickly. You don't want to melt the seals on your piston and you don't want to melt the boots. But get that hot. That grease will get more runny. The viscosity will drop and you'll be able to pull it out and treat it properly. Use brake parts cleaner to clean all the old stuff out of it. So you just got a couple of bolts here, wiggle it, center it, get them to go in. Now when you take this apart, it's the same way. You just take these bolts out here and uh, loosen them as much as you can by hand. You got to use a wrench to crack them. When I'm cracking these, I'll show you how I do it in a tightening fashion. See, so I'll get those down. To crack them loose, I use this part of my hand, just bam, 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 they'll crack free. If these spin, depending on the car that you're doing, uh, you can see how this is hexagonal so that you can put a wrench on it. If you need to hold it, hold it. The changing brake pads is just that easy. It took me three minutes to do the half of it. When you go to put your wheel back on, taking it off if it won't come off, turn around backwards, kick it with your heel. What I mean is, turn around back. A lot of you have seen this trick before, but you kick it like this. Kick it like a mule. It'll break it free. When you go to put your wheel back on, this is one of the most important parts of the job. The two things that people screw up are they don't grease the pin. Uh, three things. They don't grease the pins. Uh, they don't make them quiet using either a lubricant or a glue. And then the other thing is uh, either not uh, tighten these bolts. And number one is they have their wheel fall off because they don't tighten in the star pattern. This is a perfect star pattern example. So when you go to put this on, see how it'll wobble? If you tighten it on and you go in a circle, like most people are prone to do, it'll bind down on one side and it won't tighten evenly. So what you want to do is you want to do a star opposite sides in this fashion so it goes on evenly. If you do that, you're just going to be okay. So I'll put these on. I like to tighten the bottom one first. You see where my foot's holding the tire? If I let go, it's floppy. It's all over the place. You do the bottom one and hold it until you get it done with the uh, air ratchet and you're going to be okay. Now when I torque, everybody's like, well, how hard do I torque them? If you use the torque specs from the factory, like a lot of uh, tire stores do just for liability's sake, you're going to find that you got them coming off every so often. Your torque stuff wears out, you don't get it calibrated, all that sort of nonsense. These are 19 millimeter almost Subarus, by the way, three quarter inch. So I get that in there. I do the bottom one first. You don't have to.
to, I just like to, and you'll see that it'll start to bind. Watch that socket slow down. And then just tap, tap, tap. See, I'm doing it opposite. Tap, tap, tap. And that ensures that you get a good, even seating. How do they know how you should torque it down? Do they break bolts off? Do they do a whole big study? No. You do it until it stops moving. Once it stops moving, that's enough. So I'll go around one more time. This is why my wheels never fall off. It might be a little bit tough to get off. Not a whole horrible lot worse than anywhere else, but my wheels never come off. I do the star pattern twice, and I do the pup, 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 you know, or pup, pup, and just make sure that that socket's not turning anymore. That'll make sure that it doesn't fall off. You can argue till you're blue in the face about whether I'm doing a good job or a bad job, torque or no torque, wrench, you know, like those sockets that are skinny in the middle that twist. At the end of the day, mine aren't going to fall off, <laughs> period. I've been doing this, I'm 33 years old now, I've been doing this since I was 8 years old, and I've only had one wheel ever fall off, and they were only finger tight. <laughs> I never hit it with the air ratchet. So that's how you do brakes on a Subaru. There's some tips for you. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you would, subscribe to my videos. I'll show you some more cool stuff. Uh, also, if you like this video, click thumbs up. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. You can also add this to your favorites by doing add to down arrow, and then it'll show a drop down menu. Click favorites. Thanks for watching.